You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Good morning. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and you are listening to A Flame Ministry. We're coming to you live this morning on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And this is a show about ministry. It's for people who are professional faith leaders, be you a priest, a pastor, rabbi, imam, deacon, chaplain, whatever the that title may be, um, and also for those of you who are leaders within your faith community, whatever that title and description may be, and however you understand that. This show is um, focused on helping uh, faith leaders uh, build bridges between faiths whenever possible, uh, dispelling some misconceptions that might be there at, from time to time as well, but also talking about issues of ministry that are common to most, if not all, faiths because they're issues about people. And and ministries about people. So that's why they can be common to most, if not all, faiths, uh, even though faiths do things differently at different times. And today I'm going to be talking about one of those second issues. It's uh, about people, but from a slightly different perspective. Um, this is going to be a show talking about an issue that professional faith leaders deal with. And even if you're not a professional faith leader, I really strongly encourage you to continue to listen and to pay attention because this is something your faith leader deals with. And they're not going to talk to you about it in all likelihood. So if you hear this show, you can understand some things that uh, your faith leader is dealing with. And maybe you're not aware of that or haven't thought about that in uh, in this kind of a way before, but you might be able to see some clues of what's going on with your faith leader um, and maybe even help them understand because they may not be aware that they're dealing with this issue uh, quite this way either. So the issue is – it, it's not part of the job description, what I'm going to be talking about, um, at least not one that I've ever seen. Uh, and this is something that goes with the turf of being in ministry, uh, yet it's not dealt with a whole lot, uh, if at all, even in training for ministry, at least uh, – well, that might be beginning to change some, at least in some training programs and seminaries, but it's still not something that's really front and center because there's so many things for someone going into ministry to learn, um, the, the theology of one's faith and uh, very practical issues of how you do things, that this issue doesn't always get dealt with. And the issue, it's loneliness. Yes, loneliness. Now, that may seem really strange because as faith leaders, you know, one of the things we do is we're with people. Um, ministry is about people. It's with people. It's for people. So how can one 
as a faith leader, be lonely when you're always with people? Well, there are um, several ways that that loneliness can come up and come to the fore. One of them, I'll start with the story of uh, my first ministry situation. Um, When I first became a pastor, I was single, and uh, my first ministry site was two small, relatively small congregations in a rural area. Now, I grew up in a suburb of a good-sized metropolitan area and had all of the things available to me that uh, a sub- suburb and metropolitan area can offer. Now, I'm not talking about uh, a metropolitan area the size of New York City or L.A. or nothing that big, but it still had a, a lot to offer, including family and friends and all kinds of things. But here I was in my first ministry site in these two small congregations in a rural area. Now, for you to understand, uh, this the nearest city of an even moderate size was at least 50 to 60 miles away, one way. I grew to really appreciate the natural beauty of the area, the, the peace and quiet of the rural area, the uh, opportunities to see the natural beauty, to see um, lots of different kinds of birds and animals, uh, often as, as I was driving between uh, the two uh, congregations and to visit members, uh, things I would never have seen in a, a an urban area. Uh, and the people there, they're good people. Um, they were welcoming, they were warm, they're caring people. So uh, this is nothing to disparage them. But there was a loneliness there too. Um, and there were several reasons for that. Uh, Amongst the members, uh, who were maybe 300 between the two congregations, um, there were maybe half a dozen who had some education beyond high school. Um, And here I had uh, a master's degree. So education level was different between us. Uh, All of the women my age were married and had children. So we had experiential differences and uh, life situation differences. Um, My own family uh, was a a distance of around two and a half hour drive one way. Uh, There were no other female pastors in the area. Um, Would have had to drive 80, 90 miles to see somebody like that. Uh, And my closest friend from seminary was probably four hours away um, at at the beginning of my ministry. And then uh, she moved even further away uh, than that. And so we didn't see each other very often. Now, to be fair, I started in ministry before social media existed, actually even before the internet existed. Now, I know for some of you that sounds like uh, the dinosaur years and it's hard to imagine life before that, but there was that time and it was very real and it wasn't all that long ago. Um, I'm talking about, you know, the 1980s uh, or Earlier, uh, the internet didn't really come into being until the mid-90s and they were easily available. But nowadays, with things like social media, with Instagram and FaceTime and, and Skype and Zoom and other such media, it's a lot easier to stay connected over a distance. But as good as that is, and it's really important. I don't want to un, uh, downplay that and say it's not important. It still doesn't replace being physically present with people you care about, at least from time to time. It 
it's time for us to take our first break here today. So when I come back, I'm going to talk more about this issue of loneliness and friendships. And so this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Welcome back. This is a Flame Ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. And today I'm uh, doing a show talking about an issue that professional faith leaders deal with. Uh, and as I started out at the beginning, if you're not a professional faith leader and tuning in, please stay on the, continue to listen because this is not an issue that's part of the job description, but it's something that your faith leader is most likely going to be dealing with at least from time to time in his or her ministry. And they're not likely to talk about it a lot and to come out and say, hey, I'm dealing with this. Um, but if you listen, you can help understand what's going on in their life and some of the um, the pain and the stress and the strain that this can bring into their lives and into their ministry. And before the break, I started talking, at, the issue is loneliness, by the way, uh, started talking about my first ministry experience being in two small rural congregations as a single woman. And the the reality that my family was uh, at a distance where I couldn't just easily stop by in the afternoon or whatever, and my closest friends weren't around anywhere either. Um, and this was in the days before the internet and before social media was available. So Keeping that connection, uh, yes, there was telephones, and yes, I talked on the phone with family very frequently uh, and with friends as well, but that doesn't, even with social media, that doesn't replace just sitting down with somebody over a cup of coffee and face-to-face -face talking with them and being present and um, those kinds of things. But this also raises the issue of having friends within the congregation or your workplace, if you're uh, a chaplain someplace, having friendships there. And it doesn't matter, you know, what the other person says or how you may feel, you're still always 
the person's pastor or priest or rabbi or imam or chaplain. Uh, you carry that title if you try to be a friend with someone who's a member of the community that you're serving. And that, plus the fact that you can't share a lot of things with them about what you're experiencing in the ministry. Uh, it would be inappropriate to talk about, uh, uh, you know, what some member of the congregation comes to you as a struggle that they're having and uh, that you want some feedback on. You, you just can't do that uh, with uh, someone else in the congregation that breaks a confidentiality and that is not at all appropriate um it's people place in your care uh their pains their problems their worries uh even their joys and that's a confidentiality and a sacred trust that you must maintain and so to have a friend within the congregation it, you know that person may know something's going on with Joe or Susie or whoever and may want to ask you how it's going with them. But they can ask, but you can't share that. Uh, and so it becomes – there's always a, a, a bit of a block as to what you can share in that relationship. Uh, not only that, but, you know – if you did share anything and told the person, you know, you can't say anything, well, that puts them in a very awkward position because uh, then other people in the congregation see this person as your friend and may assume that they know something, even if they don't uh, and that they shouldn't, um, and may want to try and get information from them. Um, and that puts your friend, uh, the person who you would befriend in the congregation, in an awkward position uh, of having to um, keep secrets, as it would, uh, as it were, and that puts them in a very difficult position. Um, the friends um, would know things about your views and uh, things that maybe you would l like to try but feel you can't do. And th those are all things that it would not be appropriate for that friend to, to be sharing with other people. So again, it puts them in a very awkward position. And it gives that friend a power over other members that because they know things about you um, that they can't tell or don't want to tell. Um, and so it puts them in a position over other members. It also puts them in a position with some power over you. Uh, what would they tell? What you know might happen if they shared something uh, with someone else? And so having friends within the congregation, as much as you may resonate with other people in that congregation and really care about them and trust them as well, it's very difficult. And then there also becomes the issue of what happens to that friendship when you leave. Because as uh, faith leaders, it's not common for a faith leader to stay in one ministry site for the whole of their ministry. So what happens when you leave? What happens to that relationship? What happens if there's a strain in your relationship with the rest of uh, the congregation or the ministry site? What happens to that friend at that point in time? And so there, there's so many levels on which it it becomes difficult to maintain a friendship with somebody in your congregation and it puts them in a, an awkward position in relationship to other members. So keeping those kinds of friendships is not a very good idea. It's time to take another break. Uh, and when I come back, I'm going to be talking about another level of that, and that is dating somebody in the congregation. So 
This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Flame Ministry. I'm coming right back. Stay tuned. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are and permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. We are back here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. You're listening to A Flame Ministry. I am Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host. And today I'm talking about an issue that uh, faith leaders deal with, and it is loneliness. And uh, again, I have suggest that if you're not a professional faith leader in your uh, congregation ministry site, please continue to listen, because this is something that um, most, if not all, faith leaders deal with at some time, and it's not usually talked about. So it's good for you to know what's going on. Before the break, I was talking about having uh, the difficulty of having friendships with people who are members of your ministry site, your congregation, institution, whatever it is, um, and how, what kinds of problems that can cause. And um, the that means you have to find friends someplace else, which can be difficult to do because of time and because of location. And so that can lead to a kind of loneliness. But there's another issue here. Um, like I started out talking about, I was single when I started my ministry professionally and, um, it, you know, not necessarily wanting to remain single. I wasn't taking any vows of uh being single for the rest of my life. And so, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, I'd like to meet somebody at some point in time. Well, that first ministry site was in a rural area. And um, just like with uh, the women my age, all of the men my age were married and had families and everything like that. So uh, that really left you know, not a very big pool of people to to deal with and to think about as dating. But even when I moved later to a much larger congregation and a much larger community, uh, relatively speaking at least, uh, and there were a lot more uh, of possible people to think about dating – Dating somebody within the congregation poses a lot of problems and a lot of concerns. Um, if I had dated somebody uh, in a congregation where I was working, they, think about this. What would have happened if that relationship didn't work out? You know, maybe dated for um, a couple dates or a year and, eh, you know, no thanks, but no thanks on um, part of one or the other of us. And yet we had to see each other, maybe uh, working on a board or committees together. Gets to be difficult, can be awkward. Even when you part as quote unquote friends, um, that can cause other problems as well. Um and if it was a long-term relationship and didn't work out, oftentimes what ends up happening is either uh, the member who was the date ends up leaving that congregation or uh, as a faith leader, uh, it's definitely time to go and to go someplace else. So dating somebody within the congregation is 
uh, in professional circles, that's a boundary that really is not to be crossed. Uh, and if you find somebody in a congregation, if you're single and want to date that person, it's really best if uh, that person uh, goes and joins a different congregation, uh, goes to one of you goes someplace else so that you're not violating that boundary of um, the relationship of what's good and what's healthy uh, within ministry. Um, because the too many strains on the relationship uh, if it doesn't work out and even if it's working it the, the whole thing is felt by other members in the congregation and there can be all kinds of problems with that so um, that's not something that's really looked upon so when you're talking about uh, having friends within the congregation not having them not having that kind of social act Activity available easily, that creates a social loneliness. As I'll call it a, a social loneliness that pastors deal with. There can also be a cultural loneliness. Um, like I said, in my first parish situation, um, I was in a rural area. The um, big cultural event of the, that local area was uh, a series of travel logs that was sponsored by by one of the uh, service groups that uh, service clubs that uh, and this was done every fall. Now, for those of you who may not know what a travel log is, because they're not very common these days anymore, it's basically a movie. It was shown in a movie theater, small town movie theater, um, that talks about what it would be like to visit some faraway place. And uh, just you know, somebody describing you know that kind of a visit, and um, the sights to see, and kind of a, a virtual trip to someplace else, and that was the big cultural event. And it was like to me, okay, but that's not what I was looking for as a, a cultural event. The other major event of the year was the annual county fair that was held every summer. And like most county fairs, that was about the farm animals, the cows, the chickens, the ducks, you know, uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, I like animals, but I really wasn't into farm animals a whole lot. And uh, the other part of the county fair was about the homemaking things, um, sewing and cooking and uh, arts and crafts types of things. Now, I've always done some arts and crafts things. That part I could take. And, and I like cooking, but I was single at the time. And so... I wasn't into baking pies or putting up preserves or canning things for one person. That just really didn't make a whole lot of sense. And so, you know, you know, maybe I would go to the county fair, walk around for an hour or two, and that was enough for me uh, at that point in time. So the culturally, that wasn't the kind of activity I really was looking for. To get to a concert uh, was at least a 100-mile round trip. Um, and uh, to go to a, a theater, a theatrical performance or something was even further than that. Um, and so I just didn't. It was uh, – and they – besides which, they were usually on Saturdays. And since I'm a Christian pastor, that – didn't work out too well with Sunday morning worship services. So nowadays, yes, um, this was also before the advent of cable TV and satellite TV. So nowadays you can get a lot of things on Netflix and uh, through Amazon and through all kinds of other platforms and the Internet uh, to see almost any kind of concert that you want or a play, uh, take a course uh, over the computer at some distant university or whatever, uh, and take a virtual vacation uh, through the internet. And that's all wonderful. It's all very helpful. It's good. A um, uh, little bit of a substitute, but again, it doesn't replace the, the experience of being in the audience at a concert or at a performance of some sort. And so, um, you know, if that's all you've got and that's what's there, that's good. We now have those things, but there can still be a, 
a cultural isolation and loneliness that goes on. It's time for another break. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about one other kind of loneliness, professional one. So stay tuned. We're coming right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Uh, you're listening to A Flame Ministry, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. I'm talking today about um, an issue for professional faith leaders called loneliness. It's not one what, that most people would think of as uh, an issue that faith leaders face, professional one, because it's not part of a job description, and it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And I've talked about uh, the possibilities that there's a social loneliness um, not having friends or family nearby. Uh, there's a possibility of a cultural loneliness being in an area where the culture and the activities, the cultural activities one enjoys are not readily available. But whether or not those things are true, there is a third kind of loneliness that I would say probably affects every professional faith leader at some point or other in his or her ministry. And it's a professional loneliness. So even when there are friends and family around, even when there are the kinds of cultural activities available that a faith leader enjoys, um, there this professional loneliness can occur. Um, and it it's because of this. I, as a faith leader, professional faith faith leader, we have the opportunity to get to know our members. And as we do, we get invited in to be part of their lives in many ways. Um, an example is, you know, when someone gets married, yes, we're there to perform the ceremony, the the wedding ceremony, um, and that, and often then invited to a reception that might follow. Uh, same would be possibly true after a baptism or confirmation or whatever the those various rites and activities are within your faith, uh, whether it's a bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, or, or whatever. Um, and we get invited in with those things. That's a wonderful thing. The same thing, kind of thing begins to happen with the pains and struggles in the member, uh, the lives of our members. Um, the, those painful times, uh, yes, when there is a death, uh, we're there to offer comfort and not only 
to perform a, a funeral service or whatever that end of life service may be, um, but also to do follow up visits. Um, we're there uh, if people invite us in when there's a, a new diagnosis of a serious illness, when there are problems in relationships. Um, all of those kinds of things are possible times that we get invited in, and that's a sacred trust to be invited into people's lives during um, the good times and the difficult times of their lives. And that requires, as I mentioned earlier, confidentiality. We can't share those things that are going on uh, in other people's lives with our friends or with our family, let alone with other members. Um, and that confidentiality is uh, an obligation that every professional faith leader carries. And there are really only two exceptions to that kind of confidentiality. One is um, that there are a few occasions, a very few, but a few that legally we are bound to report uh, a couple of things. Uh, and the second exception is if someone gives us permission to share what they have told us. Um, maybe that they have a, a recent diagnosis of some form of cancer and they want the members of the faith community to pray for them and uh, that they, they share it's okay to say yeah, briefly what's going on. That would be an ex uh, a permissible exception to that. But this also means that you know maybe 99% or better of what is shared with us by members, we have to hold in confidence. Um, and the accumulation of this, and sometimes the uh, the weight of some of these things, can feel like uh, we're carrying a huge load all alone. Uh, and yes, there are many people who say, well, pray and give it to God. Yes, we need to do that. We need to pray. We need to share these things with God, and that's great, uh, or however one understands the divine. But that doesn't mean we stop caring. That doesn't mean we stop wanting to be there for the other person and to uh, help them along the way. But there are ways in which, as a faith leader, I can't do that. I mean, if I were to see a member who had shared something with me in confidence, and I see that person in the grocery store or in um, the post office or someplace else in the community, I can't go up to the person and say, how are you doing? Uh, I, even if it's uh, during a worship service or someplace at the worship facility at a committee meeting, I can't pull them aside and say, hey, what's going on? How are you doing with things? That is, then other people are going to say, wonder what's going on with that person? You know, what, you know, something's going on. Why? I wonder what it is. And that would be inappropriate to do that. And um, I can't, so I can't ask those things in a public setting. Um, and the person may not want to reach out very much. I can't pry my way in and say, hey, you know, you haven't talked to me in three weeks. What's going on with that? That's not usually a really good idea. Um, so... Even to say something like, I'm thinking about you or I'm praying for you uh, when you're in a public area, can't, can't do that um, because it betrays that there's something there. Um, and on top of this, until that person wants to share with us what is continuing to happen, we may never know. We may never know the resolution of something, especially if we refer that person to uh, to counseling with somebody else, if that's the kind of situation it is, or if they go for medical treatment, or if they move to another area for whatever reason, and we may never know what happens. And so the result is that as a faith leader, uh, we often carry a lot of care and concern for members, and that can be carried for years, for even for decades, uh, when we don't know how things are resolved for a person. Uh, even long after we've 
retired or left uh, a particular uh, ministry site, that care and concern goes with us. We don't just cut people off and cut that caring out of ourselves. And so that that leads to a professional kind of loneliness. So it's time for another break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about, okay, here's three kinds of loneliness. How do we start to deal with that? Uh, so but we do need to take a break. This is a flame ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning. We're coming right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back. You are listening to um, A Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, coming to you live today for this show and been talking about an issue that professional faith leaders deal with, and it's the issue of loneliness. And I've talked about uh, social loneliness, a cultural loneliness, and most recently about professional loneliness. And now to talk about, okay, how do we deal with this? And again, if you're not a professional faith leader, please continue to listen so you have a greater understanding of what's going on with your faith leaders. Um each of these reasons for loneliness has its own characteristics. And yes, we can all benefit from prayer, from meditation, uh, from reading uh, sacred writings, from journaling, from all of those kinds of activities. They're great. They're helpful. Uh, and I encourage any and all of those. Uh, those of us who are people of the book um, – we also need to remember that uh, we believe that we're not created to be alone. Uh, we were created to give care and support to others, but also to receive it. And sometimes as professional faith leaders, we're not so good at receiving that care and support. So what might that look like? Well, there are several different ways that it, that can be done. It can be done one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a, a counselor, with a coach, uh, that kind of thing. It can also be done with a, a dedicated support group for faith leaders uh, led by somebody who is skilled, either as a perhaps as a spiritual director, someone who's a counselor, trained group facilitator, or trained mastermind leader. Um and to be in a group like that requires that there be some agreed upon ground rules um, with confidentiality at the top of the list. Um, it won't work if uh, there becomes competition in the group over, you know, who's got the best ministry, who knows how to deal with things better than other people. Those kinds of things just won't make the group work well at all. Uh, it won't work also if members don't prioritize being at those meetings. Uh, usually the meetings in those kinds of groups are monthly. And so faith leaders, if you're going to join a group like that, that's got to be a priority, uh, you know, short of a, a pastoral emergency. Um, that kind of thing has to be a priority then to be part of that group. Uh, and it requires that all of the members respect each other. Um, no one gets to dominate the conversations. There needs to be equal time for everyone at each of the meetings. Um, group sizes usually range from 6 to 10, maybe 12 at the outside. Um, and those kinds of groups have to be a safe 
place for people to share their personal struggles uh, of what's going on, how they are personally dealing with the loneliness and any other issues that are going on in their ministry, whether it's uh, criticisms or problems that um, people are uh, putting upon them, conflicts, whatever that may be. I've been in, fortunate to be in two of those kinds of groups. Uh, the first one was early on in my ministry. Um, in the later years when I, I was in that first ministry setting, uh, and that little group at that point, it was uh, different Christian denominations, uh, leaders who were part of that group. Uh, it was uh, very helpful to me um, as I was in that more isolated uh, rural setting there. Um, and it helped me to know that my experiences were normal, uh, that things I was feeling, things I was experiencing weren't like something was wrong with me or something was strange about that setting. Uh, and it took away a lot of my stress. Um, I got to hear how others were dealing with people and situations, and it gave me ideas of what to do or what not to do. Um, and most of all, I was no longer alone in the endeavor of ministry. Uh, and then after I moved and uh, went to a different community, I wasn't part of a group for a number of years. And uh, But then after another move um, and a few years in ministry, uh, did become part of another group. And that was um, one that was really important. It was a uh, membership in that group was by invitation of other group members. So they kind of decided who would be a good fit to stay, to be a part of that group. Um, there was a covenant that I had to sign at the beginning of each new year actually, uh, to say, yes, these are the ground rules. These are the things I'm going to um, commit myself to. Um, we met from September through May, um, knowing that summer months were not easy times to meet. Um, and But sometimes there was a, a two-day retreat during the summer months. Um, there was a leader who was uh, both a certified um, spiritual director and she was also a licensed counselor and she was kind of the leader of this group. Um, there was a fee that I paid in this group, not in the first one, but um, uh, I think it was about $30 a month at that time. It's um, I'm sure gone up since then. But uh, so it was nominal, but it was important. Uh, it gave me a sense that, yes, this is important enough to put some money behind it. Um, the size of the group was usually limited to about eight, um, but we usually had maybe six or seven members in the group. The leader always opened with a devotion of some sort, and then each member had uh, a chance for about five minutes, uh, two to five minutes depending, uh, for some check-in time. And um, it was also a time when the leader would ask uh, who would want some more time, who had a bigger issue that they really wanted some help with uh, for that uh, particular meeting. Um, and members could ask for that additional time and to get feedback about an issue, to get some support on an issue. We ended each time with prayer uh, and silence or some way that the leader thought was appropriate. And these meetings usually were at least two hours long. Uh, so we had to set aside time, uh, had had people who traveled a couple of um, like two hours uh, each way to get to these meetings. Uh, so it wasn't just in one little local community, but uh, it was a very dedicated group of people. Um, and sometimes uh, part or the whole group uh, would uh, then go out for uh, lunch together or some social time uh, for a little while after the group meeting. Um, I was in that group for a couple of years, and it was a very important time for me because the congregation I was serving at the time was going through some conflict. And the issue eventually came to a resolution of sorts, at least of sorts, and things, uh, that issue quieted down. But then uh, there were issues of my husband was all also a pastor and uh, is also a pastor. And uh, he began to sense that it was time 
for him to leave that congregation and go someplace else. And so there were many issues I was dealing with, with, okay, possibly moving, selling our house, uh, all of those kinds of stresses and strains as well. And the group was definitely a benefit to me to be able to work through some of that and to express my feelings and concerns. Um, it was wonderful to have that safe place, a supportive place to deal with those kinds of issues. Um, it's time for us to take another break. And when I come back, I'll be sharing some other things uh, um, to wrap up this time together about dealing with loneliness in ministry. This is a flame ministry here on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. We're coming right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knutson's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knutson is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Well, welcome back. Uh, we are back here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Uh, I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry. And today I've been talking about an issue that uh, doesn't get talked about a lot with um in ministry circles, uh, that it's an issue that faith, professional faith leaders face, uh, in various ways at various times in their ministry. It's the issue of loneliness. Uh, yes, even working with people, uh, all the time, uh, pastors, priests, rabbis, imams, chaplains can face a lot of loneliness. And I've identified basically three kinds of loneliness. One is social loneliness, uh, being away from, uh, extended family, uh, friends, and the difficulties of having friendships within uh, the faith community or uh, if single dating someone within your faith community, um, the problems that those create for uh, oneself as a faith leader, trying to have those friendships or dating with with that or and other people, um, the, the people we befriend or date as well as uh, other members in the faith community. Um, so how difficult that gets to be. And um, those relationships really have to be with other faith leaders in our area or people who are not members of the, the congregation or the situation that we are serving in. And if, depending upon the the community one is, and that can get to be very difficult. Um, there's also the possibility of a cultural loneliness. Um, 
opportunities to take part in uh, cultural activities that a person has enjoyed in the past. If those are not easily and readily available in the area, it may be uh, live concerts or theater uh, or some other kinds of performances that people uh, have grown to enjoy and appreciate. And if it's not something that's easily available in one's area, that can create some issues as well. But the big one that everybody faces uh, from time to time is a professional loneliness. Uh, there's uh, so much to deal with as faith leaders uh, and the of uh, we can't share with any other people, uh, either, even with family or friends. Uh, so we either have to carry that alone, which creates a great burden and a loneliness, or find a, a person or a group where confidentiality is central to the relationship. It's a safe place where we can share our own frustrations, our fears, our failures, our hopes, our dreams. And so I encourage all faith leaders to seek out a coach, uh, a, a coach who knows what ministry is about, uh, a spiritual director, a licensed counselor, a trained group facilitator, a mastermind leader, or someone who is uh, like that, who's familiar with the issues of ministry. Um, and these things can be done as in-person meetings or nowadays through Skype and Zoom and other such platforms it can be done over the internet as well. Um, I do have training as a, in the option process dialogue, which is a type of mentoring and coaching. Uh, I have training as a group facilitator and as a mastermind leader. So if you can't find someone in your area and you would like to discuss the possibilities of some individual coaching or group coaching or maybe even being part of a mastermind group, um, you can – Find me on Facebook at Aflame Ministry and reach out to me there. Friend me, send me a personal message, uh, or call my business phone number, which is 803-604-9161, and we can talk about what that might look like. So professional loneliness is an issue. Don't suffer alone. Reach out to someone. This is a flame ministry. Thank you for being here today. God's blessings to you for the coming week, and come and join me here again next week for another edition of a flame ministry. Take care. This has been a flame ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.